I'm sitting here in my office on Manhattan's east side, and I'm looking out my window. And do you notice that building up there? That's the building where the Jeffersons used to live, y'all. You remember the Jeffersons, George and Wheezy, that successful 70s sitcom? Well, I started wondering, what are George and Wheezy doing now and all of those funny Jefferson characters? So I said, why don't we find out today? Come on, let's go. Hey, aren't you Ralph, the Jefferson's doorman? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, I was wondering about George and Wheezy. Do they still live here? Well, I haven't seen them since the show went off the air in July of 85, but I'd sure like to see them. You yeah. know, I have a couple of kids in, <laughs> in, uh, in college. Oh, I watched the I'm, show, Ralph. Here's your 20. Uh, <laughs> look, look who's there. Uh, oh, really? it's Wheezy hey. and George. How are you? I'm Rolanda. I do a talk show here, and I see your building outside of my office. Oh, yeah. Well, at last, somebody is coming here to get us out. <laughs> I was dying to do a reunion show. There's Florence and Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I heard we're going to do a reunion show. You yeah. did, and, and you know, we've got Come great on. food. We're going to do the show. Have food too? Let's go. Oh, well, we've got a limo. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. I'm so happy to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. remember the Jeffersons. How many folks? Let me hear. I know everybody. It's amazing. It ran for 11 years. Absolutely. And I can't think of another sitcom that has run that long. Maybe Cheers might have beat it out, but I think that's about the only show. I've been having a good time with the Jeffersons today. I am so thrilled to have found the Jeffersons for this reunion show. But for those of you who don't remember George Jefferson, well, he was that bigoted, opinionated, rags to riches businessman in the groundbreaking television series, The Jeffersons. It was extremely controversial, you might say, but gave many of us a great belly ha ha. Many laughs. George was identical to Archie Bunker, you might say, of all in the family. There was just one difference between them. George was a black bigot, Archie was a white bigot. <laughs> in fact, the Jefferson character started on All in the Family and soon became a successful spinoff. From 1975 to 1985, it was a top 20 television hit. Let's see why. You are not gonna close down? Weezy, now why would I do a stupid thing like that? I mean, you gotta have faith in people. <laughs> what, I mean, just because a few people do something wrong, you ain't gotta punch everybody. <laughs> but that's what Weezy, Weezy, Weezy. You got to learn to trust people. <laughs> oh, George, I love you. Hmm. Now, wonder how much it's going to cost for steel plated walls and iron bars. <laughs> Oh, that George. Please welcome Sherman Hemsley and Isabel Sanford, everybody. Woo! Oh, come on in. Come on in. Oh. I love you guys. You know, we've been in the back just gabbing, and they're like, they're just like Wheezy and George were on the show. They're just going back and forth. You might, 11 years, what a run that was. One of the longest that I think we've ever seen in a sitcom. We just don't hold a job long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because I remember that your character was just written on, uh, in all my, all in the family, was just written for a couple of little stints. They wanted to make sure that Lionel was seen having a mother. Just for one episode. Just for one episode. Yeah. And they loved you. Is it the public that loves you or the producers who make those decisions? Well, at that particular time, I think it was the producers because the public didn't know me that well. Wow. What a tremendous show. Yeah. Did you enjoy doing it? Did you have as many laughs as we did as we watched the show, sitting at home with the family yeah, around no, the two? I, I loved it, yeah. Every Wednesday when we read the script, we had dying laughing. <laughs> dying Fresh laughing. script every, every Wednesday. Great yeah. writers. Yeah, you seem a little mischievous. You know, what I got to know of you today, you seem mm -hmm. a little mi Yeah, you, who, me? <laughs> who, me? Me? I yeah. came, I just came out of the makeup room. He said, when are you going to get your makeup on? <laughs> oh, no. He always does that to me. When are you going into makeup? <laughs> 
I would think that as characters, when you, when you play a role together as husband and wife for that long, there's got to be a, some kind of union, some kind of bond that happens oh, yeah. between you. Can it's you like, tell me a bit about your relationship off, off screen? Hmm. Well, it seems like now we are really married because every time we turn out, we're doing something together. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking they're trying to make because we are called as guests together on yeah. different shows. Abbott and Costello, they I'm trying to make another. <laughs> yeah, I said we are teamed together like a comic team. Yeah, you know. Did, and what were some of the 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 most the things you had to really adjust to? Because you're two bi very big personalities. What's the toughest thing about working with Isabel? Was it, uh, I really can't, it was no problems. The toughest thing? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, what's not to love? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, surely there was something. Did you ever have any kind of, any problems backstage, or was it all one big happy family? She's always complaining about me eating all the time, right? Chewing. Uh, whenever impressive. we had food scene, you know, with food, they always have to come, what, what do you want to eat, Sherman? <laughs> what do you want to eat? Because he really eats. He really, <laughs> he really eats. Yeah. You were the only one in the cast who actually won an Emmy, is that right? Yes. Yes. And then nominated three years thereafter. I was almost like Susan Lucci. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I want that Emmy! <laughs> I mean, they kept nom I almost didn't uh, show up that <laughs> time. I, I said, why? I mean, I'm nominated. Yeah. And uh, that nonsense about i rather be nominated. I, I love know. to be nominated. It's just, well. <laughs> In other words, she wanted to win. Well, I want to win. win. I she mean, if I'm win. nominated, I want to win. That's right. And after six or seven times, come on. I know. I, I was nominated for an Emmy, too, and I agree with you. I had some friends. We were looking at the yeah. Emmys the other night, and then my friend looked at me and said, if you ever get nominated again, don't give that line about how happy you were to be nominated. nominated you no. that <laughs> That's just full of crap. No. And, and when I'm, uh, they say, and the winner is Jane Doe, whoever. <laughs> I meet Jane Doe coming down the aisle. I'm going up the aisle. I leave immediately. <laughs> oh, God. Sherman, did you I'm feel a... the same way when you were nominated for that Emmy? Well, that was, you know, I just sort of I figured I wasn't going to win. Why did you say that? Because I just, it just, it just, I just felt that way. I just knew. Well, I'll tell you what. The, your show was number 26 of the most popular series of all times. Folks, that's beating Dick Van Dyke. That's beating My Three Sons and even beating Seinfeld. Well, who portrayed the housekeeper on the Jeffersons who everyone loved? Well, except for George Jefferson over there. <laughs> and what was her full name? Can anybody remember her full name? Well, wait, 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 wait till we come back. We're yes. going to meet Florence in just a minute, and the man back there says he knows the last name. We'll be back in a minute, everybody. George, I refuse to help you make a fool of yourself. <laughs> oh, he don't need no help with that. <laughs> Florence, where's the shrimp? Weezy! Sounds like he's in the bedroom. <laughs> Folks, mind if I ask you something? No, go right ahead. You live in this apartment, right? Uh-huh. And you got an apartment in this building, too? Yes, that's right. Well, how come we overcame and nobody told me? <laughs> the queen of the one-liners, honey. She always had me in stitches. It's the Jefferson's reunion today on Rolanda. We've been speaking to Sherman Hemsley and Isabel Sanford. Uh, who were Wheezy and George in the 11 year running. Uh, wonderful, wonderful sitcom, The Jeffersons. Now we're going to talk about Florence. Now her part was very small, but she soon became a very integral character in the series. When you think of The Jeffersons, you can't forget those one-liners by Florence like we just saw. She was the Jefferson's maid. And somebody up here said you could say, that's the trivia question of the day. Come on, this gentleman stood up and said, I know the full name. What was, the, what was her full name? Florence Johnston. Florence Johnston. You know something? You're right. So why don't you say, please welcome Marla Gibbs. That's her real name. Please welcome Marla Gibbs. Come on in. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, there she is. You know something, you are one funny lady. But we were out shooting our little open for the show out there. 
You still have the one-liners, Marla. You were still just quipping at George the same way. <laughs> yeah. Is that real? Is that what became of your friendship? Do oh, you yes. Always. Always? Mm -hmm. She's on you like that? Yeah. I guess that's fun. <laughs> that's fun. Now, your part started out as just a very short pop. Yeah, just was, to come in once or twice, and then what happened? It was a one-time thing, and uh, I left and gave the job to the other lady. Went home and cried. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all that was supposed to happen. And along about the fifth show, they wrote something else for me, and then they wrote something else for me on the eighth show, and then the next year they offered me a contract. Isn't that wonderful? And boy, did we enjoy it. Mm -hmm. What kind of, why do you think the show worked so well? I mean, I can't get over 11 years, I guess because we're going into our fourth season, and I, I know how tough to it is to keep it. I think that we were handpicked, mm. all of us, each and every one of us, handpicked, and then, then we just seemed to just like melt. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Sherman? <laughs> And pick like a melon. Like Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they go thump thump. <laughs> oh, 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 that's a good one. How much of your performance was just simple improv? Were there things that just came to the top of your head that just well, made its way it, into no. the script? The improv happened in the rehearsals, but by the yeah. time we got on the camera, it had to be set because it they would throw the camera. Right. It was all set. Yeah. Oh wow. But we came up with something brilliant during rehearsal. They put it in. Well, in terms of what was going on in America, you're talking about from 75 to 85 that time. What was, was it? I was 10. Mm -hmm. I was 10. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> but in terms of what was going on in America, because, I mean, let's face it, George Jefferson was a black bigot. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, you know, I, I often wonder, why was Archie Bunker so popular? Why was George Jefferson so popular? Did we laugh at ourselves because that is the face of America? What was it going on at that time that made this show such a hit? Well, they were so, I think because they were so truthful in what they said. They mm -hmm. said they, they spoke their minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't hide anything. Like Archie, like George, whatever they thought were popped in, stupid, but whatever popped in. <laughs> And every, everybody, it's like everybody knew somebody like that, you know? Right. right. Were you really like that a little bit, George? Did no. you have any little bigoted bones in your body? No. 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 Well, as far as paying his maid, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, are you ready for some more Jefferson trivia? Who were the Jefferson's upstairs neighbors in their deluxe apartment in the sky? And how many children did those neighbors have? We're going to find out in just a moment. I hear them whispering over there already. But can you answer this one? What did George Jefferson call children of interracial marriages? Oh, everybody knows. We'll be back in a minute, everybody. Well, I'll just go up to Harlem and get Jen. <laughs> Where she is. Where there's a will, there's a way. And where there's a willis, there's a dumb idea. <laughs> I'll go with you, Tom. Me too. Hold it, Weezy. Look, you ain't going nowhere. Now, if you want to go through this dumb idea, you go right ahead. But you should take somebody with you who knows the streets. Oh, thank you, George. <laughs> Not me, Florence. <laughs> Flip Wilson had us laughing for years. Oh, you always did have good taste. <laughs> and Phyllis Diller never aged. Can we ask you what you had done? Everything. <laughs> it's Comedy Sensations, next Rolanda. I know what it's like. My own son is married to a zebra. <laughs> a zebra? Do you know, half black and half white. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, but there ain't no problem with her because her white don't show through. <laughs> Oh, boy. And everybody knew what he called interracial children, right? Zebras. <laughs> Who were those Jefferson upstairs neighbors anyway? Well, they sure broke new ground as one of the first interracial couples on television. And that's something, of course, that George Jefferson always had a big problem with. Let's see why. Tom and Helen, they don't fight. They don't fight because they're scared to fight. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you know damn well what it means. If you two ever really started going at one another inside of five minutes, he'd be calling you... Don't say it. Nigga. He said it. Now, you listen to me. We've had lots of fights, and it's never happened. Oh, and don't tell me it never crossed your mind. No more than it ever crossed my mind to say the word hunky to talk. Ha! Well, how come you said it just then? Come on, let's go. That's the best idea you've had all day. Oh, my goodness. Now, I have to tell you, that is the first time the N-word and the H-word have been used on the Rolanda show and got a huge laugh. And, and I didn't have to say, we don't say those words. 
But to say those words on television back then, my goodness, did you get bombarded with letters? How did America, did America laugh no the letters. way that the I audience? said it once and yeah. it was uh, three minutes, just yeah. as long as it was hers when she used the line, how come you never told me? Because Al almost, Miss Jefferson, almost. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. But you're Wait. saying the laugh was long. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but she don't go. She don't give me credit for nothing. <laughs> she, I, made, uh, she made more money. She was. <laughs> all right. I'd rather get money than credit. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> it was one scene where uh, Lionel graduated. I think he graduated. Yes. And you song. got him a $3,000 watch. Three, 350, 350, $350 watch. Oh, it was more than that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten so oh, yeah, upset. Okay, $3,000. <laughs> Remember, 3, you were moving on up at this time. Oh, it was yeah. probably $3,000. Okay. And he would get anything. He'd spend money like water, you know, get <laughs> for Lionel. Eight. And so uh, when I found out, though, that he had paid $3,000 for a watch, I said, you pay three thousand dollars for the watch. Well, let's welcome the Jefferson's upstairs neighbor, Tom Willis, who played, who was played by Franklin Cover. Where are you? There you are. Hey guys, how are you doing, man? How are you, How are you? How are you? Do you, know, do you know these people? Yeah, I know them all. You know them all? Who are They're they? They're all my children. All your children? <laughs> all my children. Now, I know this That's is That's my your oldest son. son. That's your right? oldest son. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. No, this is my very good friend, Wright Alney, and his wife, Alicia, and Michel de Bourbon. De Bourbon. And my daughter, Susan. Oh, Susan. And my son, Bradford. Well, nice to meet you and guys. And their friend, Peter. And you got right. front row seats at Rolanda. <laughs> what, did right. you, what did you think when your dad was playing that role? Well, people just come up to me and say, what does your dad do? And I'd say, well, he's on that show, The Jeffersons. Oh, but you're not black. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not. Uh, uh, that was, we had, you know, funny responses. It was, it was fun having him on TV as a kid, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on and sit down, make right. yourself at home and All talk right. with us. Wow. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. you, well, must you made a so grand nice. entrance. Well, <laughs> I knew he would. I bribe the audience. I bring my own audience here. Oh. Just in case. My, the, your stuff always went over big. And my, I had to beg for my, my jokes. You know. What was it like for you working on this show? It was a revelation. How it was so? a marvelous revelation to be with this group, I mean, an interracial group that got along so well and had so much love and understanding. That's why I must inject a very sad note here because of my partner, Roxy Roker, right. who died yeah. before Christmas last year. And she was a wonderful woman. Did you ever, like when you went home or you went to cocktail parties or you went off, did anybody ever say, you know, you shouldn't be playing that role? No, nobody ever said it. We had some hate mail for interracial, you know. And Norman Lear asked me, I mean, asked Roxy, he said, when you two kissed, that was the first yeah, show. Yeah, the, what was that? We kissed, yeah. and no one had ever done that before. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Listen, look at Jordan. No, I didn't kiss you, Sherman. <laughs> I kissed Frox. Well, you could hear the She gas. said, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? She turned to me and said, what do you think? I said, this bolt of lightning is going to strike us all dead. <laughs> right? well, what, what are we going to have? What's going to happen? Well, what happened was, then we did the studio audience like this, they went berserk. They applauded so much. Mm -hmm. They were so, you know, it was time. Oh, I've I heard think this story it was so much. Time. I know you're so boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think America was ready for that at the, at the I time. I think so too. Between 75 well, and 85. Let's talk about Marla again. No, I, no, I think he was the worst. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait we got to take a quick break, and I want to hear all about it when we come back. <laughs> and for you, Jefferson's trivia buffs, what was Ralph the doorman's last name? Oh, was he married? Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll see if you can answer that right after this, and then we're going to dish the dirt. I know. We'll Ralph, there. you're needed at your post immediately. I'm on my break. Whoever it is can wait. Oh, I don't think Mr. Whittendale likes Whittendale? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> hi, Jenny. Oh, hi, Mr. Bentley. Florence. <clears throat> Am I okay? No, I think you got a cavity back there. <laughs> 
on and tell us why you think you have the most stressful job. If you are simply stressed out with no relief in sight, please call us at 1-800-4-ROSHOW or send email to rosho at aol.com. By the way, Jenny, if you're looking for a topic for your thesis, the life of a New York doorman might be good. No one realizes the contributions he makes to mankind. Thank you, Mrs. Jefferson. Or the contributions mankind makes to him. <laughs> Touche, Mrs. Willis. Touche. <laughs> what was Ralph the doorman's last name? Who, who knows it? Anybody? Who, what, 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 who, who? Hart. Hart. You're absolutely right. Let's hear it for the lady. That was our tri her trivia. Before we bring out uh, the, the, the man who played the lovable doorman, I want to get back to some of the little dish that was going on up there. Give it to me. What was going on? You were talking about this one. <laughs> breaks up all the time. And he looks at me because he knows I'm the weak one. And he makes it over by me and does this so that I'll, when he laughs, I'll laugh too. And then he tells the director, she. You can say you guys sound like kids in the back of a class. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. She's impossible to work with. <laughs> well, they all are in a way. I mean, Isabel, never my queen. You're never impossible. <laughs> oh. Just incredible. To work. <laughs> now, Isabel, how did you get that? I've my been queen? called the queen for years. <laughs> it's because it was in our contract. <laughs> we had, we had to sign contract. a statement. We had to bow. We had no. to bow. Yeah. It was in the contract. Flex. <laughs> oh, God. We would do anything for a dollar. <laughs> well, speaking of do, someone who would do anything for a dollar, he couldn't do <laughs> a Jefferson's, we couldn't do a Jefferson's reunion without the man who spent as much time holding out his hand for tips as he did opening the door. Please welcome Ned Wertimer, who played you're the best. You're the best. Oh, thank you. Have a seat. Make yourself at home. You sure were asking for those tips on yep. that show. Even out there in front of the building today, you were asking, hitting me up for some tips. Yeah, but I, I gave the $20 back to your producer. <laughs> they said you kept I it. I kept it. <laughs> I'm still upset that I gave it back to him. <laughs> well, here, I, oh, well, no, I better not. Oh, gosh. Ned, what is, what, you know, we were just talking a little earlier about how the Jeffersons really portrayed an interracial couple for the first time. And, and just what the reaction was to all of that. And you, in real life, actually married a Nigerian woman. Is that right? Very much so. Very much so, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Very much in love with her. Really? You courted her for seven years. Only what seven a years. When I met her, I said, this is it. And seven years later, she said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> You had a knife at her throat? Or what happened? <laughs> no. The lady came over here and uh, got her MA and uh, PhD at Howard University in uh, history. And uh, we luckily met one another and uh, we've been together for 25 years. Wow. 25 that is wonderful. Years. Absolutely wonderful. I understand. When you were in college, you were a business major. This seems a long way from what you majored in way back in college. Yes, I went through the Wharton School of Business, and the one thing it taught me is that I didn't want to go into business. <laughs> <laughs> I was good as an actor. That's what I had confidence in. So I went into acting. Wow. Well, that's quite a business in itself. Well, it's a profession. You can make a business out of it. I'm on the board of directors of our Actors Federal Credit Union, and I, I know something about that. Everybody join your credit union. What was the next question? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what? how come I can't get a loan? Yeah. Well, oh. uh, uh -oh. you can get a loan, but I'm not the one to get it because I know you too well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. <laughs> what are some of your favorite memoirs as you look back over those special years? The thing that you remember most, your most special memoir? Isabel? You would be. <laughs> <laughs> you just had that queenly approach that to do the topic. Uh, it's Sammy Davis story. <laughs> well, that was Sammy story. Uh, oh, she played Betty oh, the Davis? Sammy Davis story. <laughs> Sammy Davis, you can't I enjoyed working with Sammy, but nothing happened really big 
to repeat, no more than the whole show was a gas working with him. And uh, I was supposed to push him around and shove him, and he was just about like this. Did I? <laughs> did y'all, re- well, go on. Well, and he said, look, look, baby. If you're gonna push, push. If you're gonna pull, pull. I mean, don't, you know, don't cheat him like a baby. I love hearing that. And so when I had to shove him in the closet, I shoved him in the closet, <laughs> closed the door, dragged him out, and he seemed to love it. <laughs> and that was just sugar to me. Yeah, I'll I never forget it. the day when, when Sammy Davis Jr. kissed Archie Bunker. Oh, Do you yeah, remember that remember. scene? Oh, I thought we were going to fall off the, the living room chairs in my house. Uh, yeah. You know what, I, Isabel, your first role, 1968. Do you remember what movie she did first? Guess Who's Coming to Dinner with Sidney Poitier and Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. Isabel played Tilly the maid. I, you know, so I was looking at the film a, a few weeks ago, and I said, I know her. Wait a minute. She's coming up on the show. But you'd be surprised how many people don't remember me Yeah. in that movie. That's amazing. But I, uh, that was a, it's a classic today. Yes, And indeed. I really enjoyed doing it and working with Spencer. Well, I knew Sydney. Sydney and I pounded the beat here in New York together, mm-hmm. same time, years ago. But uh, Spencer Tracy was so funny. He will be, be falling down laughing while he tell one of his stories, and he's not cracking a smile. He's just telling the story. <laughs> and we... <laughs> 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 and he would say, and he would admire Catherine Hepburn's legs, you know, saying she still has the legs. Mm-hmm. And she would say about his pictures that, uh, I don't like his younger pictures because he looks like uh, an Irish cop. But the older pictures, he looked very aristocratic wow. and very sophisticated. And you hear them, these compliments from each other, and it was beautiful. Yeah, was there that romance going on at that time? I suppose, the respect for each other. Yeah. Although he would say, Catherine, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and she would shut up. And then she would say to me sometime, I'm passing by, Isabel, she says, Spencer, I think you're marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And so do we. <laughs> we have plenty more surprises for you, but first, more Jefferson trivia questions. Do you know how many dry cleaning stores George Jefferson owned? Oh, the answer when we come back. We'll be right back in a minute. You know how many? How many? We're having a great time here. It's the Jefferson's reunion show. And the trivia question before the break was, how many dry cleaners did George Jefferson own? Okay, how many? Who knows? How many you say? I say seven. How many you say? Seven. Seven? How many do you say? Seven. Seven. Oh, everybody says seven? I also say seven. Seven? Seven. Two. You say two. Somebody down there said 12 during the break. Well, let's take a look and see if this clip might give us some clue to how many cleaners George Jefferson owned. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I'm George Jefferson, uh, Jessica Jefferson's grandfather, but you don't want to hear about me. What you want to hear about is my seven dry cleaning establishments. One near you. Seven was the answer. Some questions for you guys here. This question's for Marla. I know you're on 227 also, and you seem like you love the cast. Did you love working with this cast much better than the cast of 227? Oh, me? Yes. I heard the question. <laughs> what do you ask? Yes, I loved working with this cast because we came to work to play. Jefferson's cast was wonderful, too, but I had more responsibilities on that show. The queen here, I could just play all day because she was the star of the show. Did they write you in to have this, this kind of combative attitude with, with uh, George, or did that something that just kind of came about? That started evolving. Actually, the first show, he was the one that wanted to hire me. She didn't want me. <laughs> he wanted I didn't. you didn't because he expensive. wanted me because the Willis's had a maid, mm-hmm. and you didn't want a maid. You didn't feel like you because I felt I could do it. Don't you remember myself. this? Because <clears throat> she felt like she could do it herself. <laughs> it was a long series. <laughs> yeah, what do you say? Are any of you doing any acting right now? Ooh, Am I doing some time. acting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
We Sherman. act all the time. Sherman, you're about to Not kick off pay. your own sitcom, Not for right? Pay, but yes, acting all the time. Sherman has a wonderful Sherman. sitcom now. He has yeah. a sitcom going. Yeah. And the name Sherman. Good behavior. Good behavior. And is everybody from this cast hitting you up to be on the new cast? Yeah, well, I'm going to pick it. <laughs> I'm going to pick it. He hasn't asked us yet. Well, we just got started. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about billing. Right. Yeah. What are some of you? What are, What are some other projects you're working on right now? Uh, well, I just finished a movie with uh, uh, Chris Farley and Matthew Perry uh, called Edward and Hunt. It's a send-up of Lewis and Clark. These two goofballs, like Monty Python, I mean, they go west. But I'm a rich man, and they're in love with my, one of them is in love with my daughter. Mm. And so it's, it's kind of amusing, and it's fun. Is your daughter, your daughter just laughed over there. What, what was that about? <laughs> I don't oh. know. Well, we'd like to get her into the movies. <laughs> by the way, my son is doing a play by George Bernard Shaw, uh -huh. Miss Alliance. Another actor. At the Pearl yes, Theater. Both of, both of you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Following in Dad's footsteps. Now, I want to know, have you seen this part in the movie? Is he a tough dad on the girl? <laughs> he was such a nice dad growing up. He so was. I'm sure now he was very sweet. You know, we lived in New York, though, and they filmed the show in L.A., so we would go back and forth. And I got to spend a few weeks on the set with the mm -hmm. cast, and I used to take notes <laughs> yeah. on everybody and tell them if they forgot their was lines. And I had this little <laughs> notebook. I'm going to sell it. You should. Sure? Was he tough on your little boyfriends back then? No. I don't no. think so. No. Very sweet. <laughs> sweet I mean, dad. She walked into a room one night, Jimmy Coco. If everybody remember Jimmy Coco. Said, oh my God, you're going to be a big star one day. You know, and she was so embarrassed. She was <laughs> a thousand times. And she wrote that in her little notebook. Oh, absolutely. Right. So yes, you will be, too. I was wondering if Sherman could do the little thing. Oh! Ah. <laughs> sure, look. Is that the slot the, with the dance? Look, the walk, Sherman Shuffle. Walk. What did you call that little dance you oh, did? That's called the slop. The slop. <laughs> but would y'all like to see that's the, the slop? Come on, we have like some music. Let's bring in some music. There you go. Take it, George. Woo! Let's see. Oh. Friday on the next Rolanda. A new judge pounds his gavel, but this time there's only one talk show with an inside view. Only one with a seat in the courtroom, and that's Rolanda, bringing you what the other shows cannot. And wrapping up the week's most surprising courtroom developments in special Friday shows. The arguments are heating up, and we're revealing what you can expect from OJ's first trip to the stand. All on OJ Friday. It's all in the knees. It's in the knees. I said, no, it's in the heels. It's in the heels. I can't do this. We're having a Jefferson reunion today on Rolanda. Some questions. Yes, sir. Uh, the, a compliment to the, that, that scene of, with, the, with, the, with the doorknob, the dreams do oh, come true. Oh, that's where I got my Thank Emmy Thank you for on. making all my dreams come true. You were inspired right. by that? Yes, he did. That's right. Right. Tell us about, what did that scene? He's inspired by that. Oh. Thank you. Right. So, thank Isabel, you. what was the scene that inspired? I would tell me about it. What was that scene? Well, I went back to the way we used to live as, as a child. 
where I used to live as a child. Uh -huh. And I used to uh, have uh, fantasies about the doorknob. Mm. The crystal doorknobs, I'd consider them diamonds. Oh. Well, that was the one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that was the yeah. one. Yeah, and uh, that's the one that uh, I got my Emmy on. Wow. That show. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Sherman, I know that you had mentioned that you're working on a brand new sitcom. It's called Good Behavior. Yes, Good Behavior on UPN Monday nights at 9. And what do you play? Tell us about your I character. I play Willie Good, uh, ex-con. Uh, An ex-con ex -con. on Good Behavior. Yeah, Good Behavior. Right. Let's take a look at the clip real Ooh. quick. You got a clip. You got a Look, clip. stay with me on this one, son. I'm an expert at influencing people. <laughs> don't you mean conning them? Tomato, tomato. You want to be Dean or don't you? Yeah, but I want to get it based on my accomplishments and my credentials. I mean, <laughs> they've gotten me this far. Ha! What are you talking about? You don't even have a guest bedroom. <laughs> What job comes after Dean? Because that's the one we're going for. You know, I know why you're doing this. You're trying to get me to like you. Oh, is that what you think? Yeah. How am I doing? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> How are you doing? Excuse me? How are you doing? How am I doing? Yeah, how is the sitcom going? Oh, it's going fine. You know, it'll get funnier as we go. <laughs> <laughs> Question here. Hi, I just wanted to ask George, um, the dance, the slop, was that something you created or was that written into the script? No, that's the dance I used to do back in Philadelphia. It's called the Philly Slop. Oh, yeah. the oh there's a Philly man. Yeah, Can you do the slop? Oh, that's why I'm clapping. That's why you're clapping? Because you're from Philly. No, the slop. The slop. Yeah. <laughs> no, people think I, I couldn't have invented something. What happened was I learned it late. By the time I learned it, it was out of style. <laughs> right. I'm doing it. I say, well, honey, I now. <laughs> you sure keep it in style. You sure keep it in style. Well, there's going to be a lucky member of our studio audience who's going to win a Jefferson script signed Ooh. by all the cast members here today. Get your ticket stubs to see who's holding the lucky ticket. Right. Get it ready now, and we'll have our big lucky draw right after this. <laughs> But here is a sitcom in itself. <laughs> Take a look at this man. I said, what happened to half of your head? Tell me, turn to one side. That's the innocent side. And he turned to the other side. It's the hard part. Hey, he's, he's a, what are you, what are you? I'm a rapper, Two-Face. Two-Face. Well, it's working. Good luck, son. Right. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Anything in the Rolando audience. Yes, ma'am, what's your question? Um, to, the, to the whole cast, I wanted to know, is it possible if y'all could come back together again to make one last reunion? Ask CBS that. Mm. Oh. I know that's something that you've been talking about. I've, I've, you know, so we were playing around out doing our shoot earlier today. That was something that came up. It's something that you would love to see, Isabel? Uh, would I, something I'd love to see. Would you love to do a reunion again? Could you stand <laughs> working with these folks again? I would love to. Mm. Okay. I would like to get some of our old writers back, even for that one reunion, to write it. For those of us who love the Jeffersons and would love to sit in front of the tube and belly ha-ha all over again, what can we do to help you get that sitcom back, another reunion? Well, Marla suggested write CBS. I think my manager, Brad Lamack, would know <laughs> where to write. Now, just yeah. remember, Ro, when you do this. I'd oh, like yeah. just a little part. Yeah. <laughs> right. I love that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Well, let's get some lucky audience members here. Two lucky audience members are going to receive these actual Jefferson scripts. They are signed by all of the cast members on our show today. So pull out your ticket stubs, folks. And here come the lucky numbers. Will you help hey. us choose? Yeah. Out of Ralph's hat, the uh, winner number uh, one is... Number one is... What number do you have on that ticket? Forty. Number forty. Oh, stand up like you just won a big prize and you've never been on TV before. Oh. There you are. Hey. You get your pick. Which one do you want? The blue. There you go. Number two. Congratulations. Right. Look at that. All Should those. I pick the I'll second one. one. No, I don't want Marla to pick. Well, Why not? <laughs> How about... Right. Oh, you pick it. Okay. <laughs> See, I tell you she's the boss. 58. 58. There we are! All right. And you get right. this one. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> no, that's 
85. The guy up there with two faces turned his card upside down. It was 85. I, no, it's 58. I, 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 I that was 85. Right. What yeah. are the favorite sitcoms of the cast of the Jeffersons? We're going to ask you that when we come back. We'll be right back in a minute. These legends have been making us laugh for years. Comedy sensations like Flip Wilson. I did not miss a show. Well, you always did have good taste. <laughs> and the unforgettable, never-aging face of Phyllis Diller. Can we ask you what you had done? Everything. Everything? <laughs> I even had the chair fixed. <laughs> and even Tiny Tim. Can you sing it for us? Tiptoe. Unforgettable mind. comedy sensations on the next Rolanda. if you want to. Sherman's been dancing through. Do it. What's your favorite dance these days, Sherman? From the slop to I the... do everything. Everything. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, I just mix it all together. Yeah. What are your favorite sitcoms these days? Uh, this, these days? Hmm. The one you working on, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit, Rolanda's my favorite talk show. <laughs> yeah, okay. What about yeah. you, Marla? Uh, his, because that's where I'm going to be working next. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she game, knows yeah. how to brown nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excuse oh, the yeah. pun. Yeah. <laughs> Any other favorites? Do you have any I, I love Mad About You because I have two friends on it that play his parents. Lou Zorich, who's the father, and yeah. Cynthia Harris, who plays his mother, yeah. Paul Rizzi. And you're hoping and they're I, going I love, to call you. No, they won't call me. Yeah. But I just love them. I love to see them work. Well, I love the show, too, and yeah. Frasier. I like the Larry Sanders Frasier. show. Good. Yeah. On HBO. To close up the show as we're about to say goodbye, this lady over here has been begging you to do something all throughout yeah. the show, Sherman. Mm -hmm. What has she been begging she you to do? Me to walk. Do the strut, please. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. We're moving on up to the Rolando show. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, Rolanda, Rolanda. We're moving on up to the Rolanda show. Come on and join me when, well, we will. <laughs> We're going to get it right this time. Okay. Hey, Weezy, we're hitting the big time. You mean? That's right. We're moving on up to the Rolanda show. So join me when I welcome Sherman Hemsley and the cast of the Jefferson show. That's uh -oh, it. I knew it. You got your best. <laughs> you got to give us some more. You can take my line. You mean? How about you saying, hey, George? Is that going to get me the Emmy? <laughs> <laughs>